Wilders paid for her fuel, and they drove drove away. And that was the last time she was seen. Whitaker was also able to quickly link Rosario Gonzalez um, to Wilder and took his information and concerns to the Bunyan Police De Department. The tech has shared his information and along Wilder's long history of sexual offenses. So, Whitaker along with the Kenyans had a sur surveilling Welcome back to part three of our four-part mini-series here on the TCL podcast. My name is Breezy, and here we talk murder and other forms of true crime. That could be range from missing persons to fraud to whatever. If it's true crime related, guess what? We're going to talk about it. So, before I continue, I, let me go ahead and say I do have a Patreon that you can join for early access to episodes scheduled to come out. Such as season four, I'm currently working on at this very moment. It is summer, so it might take a little bit longer because one, I really want to enjoy my summer to, since it's not my since I'm not actively looking for a job this summer. Um, and three, I have a merch shop for all your true crime gear. And for any updates on my channel or podcast, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, with that being said, let's dive into today's episode, shall we? Today, we have a very long list of victims. Um, so, Wilder had an eye for models that was less, that was, and he was known to lure his victims to promises of modeling contracts. A successful um, Boynton Beach real estate developer, his wealth in fast cars and speed, both opulent homemade Wilder, appeared to be a successful businessman who many young women felt like they could trust. In fact, Friends would later recall, they thought Wilder had to was a consummate gentleman. Rosario Gonzalez was one of those victims. On February 6, 26, 1984, 20-year-old model and Miss Florida contestant vanished into Miami. Rosario Gonzalez had been employed at the Miami Grand Prix, where Wilder would race 911, 911 Porsche. And according to witnesses, he left the Grand Prix track between 12 and 1 p.m. with a man in his mid-30s. Thir mid and she loved, and she lived with her parents in Homestead, Florida, about a 23-mile drive from Miami. But she never arrived home that evening, and her parents said she always called home if she was going to be late and never intentionally worried them. Her vehicle was later found parked outside DuPont Plaza Hotel in downtown Miami after her pay at, and her paycheck was never picked up. Rosario's fiance would later tell the police that Wilder had known Rosario um, and had photographed her to, for a cover photo of a romance book in night, October 1982 and Rosovia, Rosario never heard from him again. This is until the day of the disappearance when witnesses saw her leaving we have a man who fitting his description. She remains missing. Next is Elizabeth Kenyon. Elizabeth um was Miss was the was another Miss Florida pageant participant that would vanish. Elizabeth Kenyon was the University of Miami graduate, a coach for cheerleading squad at Coral Gables High School, where she also taught special needs children. She was also a former fashion model. She won the 1982 Orange Bowl Princess Competition. She was also a finalist in Miss Florida pageant, where she had competed with Rosario. Elizabeth and Wilder had dated. He had proposed marriage to a 23 to 23-year-old, but she declined because she because his offer offer because of their 16-year age get age difference. On Monday, March 5th, 1984, a security guard. 
at Coral Gables High, he, I briefly spoke to Elizabeth in the parking lot when she didn't show up for her sh- when she didn't show up at her apartment. Her roommate was immediately concerned and assumed Elizabeth had gone to visit her parents, who lived thirty minutes north near Pompano Beach. When Elizabeth did not show up to work the following day, her parents reported her missing. Elizabeth's father, William, had recently seen bruises on his daughter's face, confronted her, but never explained the injuries away, telling him that she had broken up broken up a playground fight. With one, re- one reason for concern a few days days following her disappearance, she Ken- Kenyon hired Kenneth Whitmaker and a $1,000 per day in P.I., on March 8, Whitmaker interviewed a gas station attendant who was familiar with Elizabeth and told the investigators that she had driven to a station in her Chrysler convertible, convertible with a man driving a Cadillac Eldorado following her. The attendant recalled overhearing Elizabeth talking about going to the airport and the man fitting, guess whose description? Wilder's. Paid for her fuel, and they drove drove away, and that was the last time she was seen. Whitaker was also able to quickly link Rosario Gonzalez um, to Wilder and took his information and concerns to the Bunyan Police De- Department, detectives shared his information, and along Wilder's long history of sexual offenses. So... Whitaker, along with the Kenyans, had a sur- surveilling his home and then requested help from the FBI, who declined to get involved because there was no information leading to an interstate kidnapping. Though the evidence was compelling, the FBI explained they had no jurisdiction at the time. So, Elizabeth's vehicle was found on March 11th, parked at the Miami International Airport, and her name did not show up on any of the flights. Later, Whitaker's spoke directly to Wilder, who denied seeing Elizabeth. Um, his secretary then tried to assure that the PI that Wilder was being truthful about those girls who went missing. And he then strategically released information to Miami Herald, who reported a race car driver was the suspect in the disappearance of two women. Two days later, Wilder took his three dogs up to a local kennel, which drew a large amount of money in the bank account, Got yeah, his, his 1973 New York New Yorker and bolted. Her she remains missing, and her parents have both passed away, and never knowing what happened to their daughter. Next on our list are another one of Wilder's victims, Colleen Osborne. Yes, she would disappear on March 15, 1984. As well. Then there was a Jane Doe who was found March 20th, 1984. Then there was a Terry Walden who was a 23 year old nursing student at the University of Beaumont when she disappeared. Then there was a Suzanne Logan who disappeared on March 26, the same day as Terry Walden's body was found in Beaumont, Texas. Next was Cheryl Bonaventura, who disappeared on March 29, 1984, nearly miles away in Grand Junction, Colorado. So I think we can see the pattern going on here. But let's talk more about Wilder's disappearance before we jump back to Tammy Lynn. Uh, so two days later, um, on April 1st, Michelle Corfman was found, have been vanished as well. Next was Tina Marie Wasikel. Then there was Donette Wilt, who disappeared April 10th, 1984. And she, and... She was first to lure his next victim, who was a 15-year-old student. Elizabeth Dodge was also one of his victims. Okay, that's it for this part. 
Next, in our very last part of the series, we will talk about Life Spared, many more, and how the story continues.